Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more of the worst bars to be featured on Bar Rescue and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Mystique Lounge For a season 2 episode, John Taffer heads over to Mystique Lounge to rescue it from impending closure. Owned by Darren and Torres, they purchased the popular club a while ago hoping to cash in on its success but failed miserably. The main reason was because a patron was shot and killed near the entrance which tarnished the lounge's reputation completely. Rather than attract a younger crowd, they mostly get older folk which is why the energy levels are abysmal. Hoping to get some more youthful patrons, the owners decided to bring in a promoter named John to do exactly that. While he certainly did his job, he oddly kept the unattractive door fee and attracted in some questionable characters. Being $80,000 in debt and having little to no options left, the owners decided to call out to Taffer for some aid. When he finally arrives with his experts, they point out that the interior is grey, bland, and just lifeless. Wanting to get an idea of the customer experience, Taffer sends in his expert Jesse Barnes for recon. Upon entering, she's practically ignored for the first few minutes, but eventually orders a Long Island iced tea. A while later, her girlfriends come in for bottle service and they wait close to 5 minutes until someone finally seats them in the VIP area. Aside from being served ice without an ice scoop, the glassware they were served their drinks in was filthy. Fed up with what he was seeing, Taffer heads inside and inspects around. He's utterly disgusted to see that the bar's floor is moldy and that bacteria is growing everywhere. Forcing the staff to clean things up, Taffer leaves and returns the following day so he can have an important meeting with the Mystique team. Through some discussion, the bar rescue host learns that the staff drink on the job and that most of the revenue goes towards paying the promoter John. After getting the owners to renegotiate the deal with their promoter, Taffer gets his experts to train the staff on the new drinks they'll be implementing. Once the training was over, the famous rescuer decided to hold a stress test which was a dumpster fire. Not only was the staff very overwhelmed, but one customer tipped the server by putting money into her chest and a heated fight broke out which resulted in the police being called. Following the terrible service, Taffer gathers the staff once again for a meeting and the owners ultimately decide to fire John since he brings in questionable people. Of course, a lot more training was required before the club could move into the renovation phase, so they did just that. Fast forward to near the end of the episode, Taffer renamed the place to Aura Nightclub, gave both the interior and exterior an upscale look, and added in tons of new equipment. Post Bar Rescue, the owners revealed that their overall sales went up by 25%, which is pretty decent. Now that the owners had full control over who they let into the club, the place was a lot safer and less uncomfortable. Unfortunately, due to unknown reasons, the bar closed down sometime in 2013 and the building was completely abandoned. J.A. Murphy's in another season 2 episode, John Taffer pays a visit to the failing J.A. Murphy's to bring it back on its feet. Owned by Keith Murphy and Joel Gallant, they decided to open the bar on a whim back in 2009. Even though they had little to no experience in the industry, they successfully launched the bar by offering cheap drinks. In the beginning, the business made well over $10,000 a week, but their success was short-lived. After some time, their profits and customer base dwindled down to the point that they were losing thousands per week. Uncertain of how to move forward, the owners decided to reach out to a professional like Taffer for some guidance. Upon his eventual arrival with his daughter Sam, they both watch through CCTV cameras and are appalled with the bar state. Before sending in his daughter for recon, they take a look at the Yelp reviews which are admittedly brutal. People complain about the fact that the food and drinks are awful, that most of the patrons are creepy drunks, and that the place is filthy. Sending in Sam to get a customer's perspective, her nose is immediately assaulted with a pungent smell. Putting aside the fact that the bar had the worst stench and filth she's ever seen, she decides to order a drink. Attempting to get a draft beer, Sam is told that they haven't had any in stock for about a month and that most of the mixed drinks are unavailable due to lack of ingredients. Settling on getting a simple vodka and tonic which had way too much alcohol, the bar rescue host's daughter also orders some nachos that the cook cross-contaminates while preparing. Appalled with what he was seeing, Taffer heads into the bar and confronts Murphy about how far his bar has fallen. Disgusted, the famous rescuer forces the staff to throw away the food and clean things up before he can start the rescue. Leaving and returning the following day, Taffer holds a staff meeting and is told that no one likes or respects the co-owner Gallant. Hoping to steer the JA team in the right direction, Taffer brings in his experts who first start by inspecting around. While the bar area was infested with maggots, the kitchen had a broken freezer, built up grease, and rat droppings which is nasty. Taffer decides to hire an inspector who points out that the beams in the basement are rotting so much that you can stick a finger through it. Unsure of whether he can save the bar or not, the famous rescuer vacates the area and brings the staff to an off-site location for training. Once the staff was brought up to a competent level, Taffer was forced to skip the stress test due to the foundation damage. Thankfully, Taffer's engineers were able to fix the issue and the bar was finally ready to be renovated. 
Renaming the place to Murphy's Law, the exterior was given a clean wooden sign and the interior was polished to look less, well, dive bar -y. Additionally, they received a new freezer, a high-tech draft beer system, and a simple but fantastic menu. Relaunching soon after, things went pretty well, especially considering the fact that they didn't have a stress test like in most episodes. Weeks after the taping of this episode, the owners revealed that their food sales went up by 15% and their beverage sales by 27%. Staying open for a while longer, the business shut down in July of 2012 before the episode even got the chance to air. It was then put up for sale but struggled to sell since the building faced more structural problems. Weber's Place As our final entry, we're going to discuss a bar that John Taffer attempted to rescue called Weber's Place. Owned by Kervin Sinton, he purchased the bar back in 2007 with the money he saved up from the barbershop he ran. To try and attract people in, the owner hired a collection of bands to perform, but it did nothing but harm the bar. Aside from losing thousands from overbooking entertainers, the bar couldn't compete with the others in the area. Due to the lack of funds, the bar was never redecorated so it lacked identity and still looked like the strip joint it once was. What's worse, the bar is frequently stolen from by its own staff members who steal money and alcohol. With the bar's debt steadily rising and the staff being out of control, the owner decided to call out to Taffer for some much needed help. When he finally arrives with his experts, they're unimpressed with the exterior of the bar and compare it to a badly made birdhouse. Expert chef Keith Jones is sent into the bar to get a customer's perspective and orders an extra dry martini. Rather than use an ice scoop, the bartender scoops the ice with the glass itself, which is obviously very risky. Ordering some wings, they take extremely long to arrive since the chef works at a sluggish pace and when they finally do come, they're rubbery and discolored. Having seen more than enough, the bar rescue host heads inside and confronts the owner about his business's practices. Sinton seems to understand that the bar has a lot of issues, but thinks that the biggest problem is the staff, who constantly take from him. Promptly holding a staff meeting soon after, Taffer highlights that he'll get anyone who continues to steal fired. Once he was done scaring the staff, the famous rescuer inspects around and notices that the kitchen is filthy. Not only is the walk-in covered in guck, but they find a container that's filled with blood that's been sitting around for days. Let's just say that it smelled putrid. After finding a filthy rag in the beer bin, Taffer forces the staff to deep clean the building before he can move forward. Coming back the following day, the famous rescuer is impressed to see that both the kitchen and bar are spotless. Taking a look at the bar's reports, Taffer is shocked to see that they gave away $435 worth of alcohol the Thursday before and $715 the very next day. Confronting the bartender who was working that night being Mario, he openly admits to overpouring drinks and taking money. Despite this, the owner spinelessly decides to give him a second chance, but after Taffer wakes him up a little bit, he finally fires the thief. Now that a clear message was sent that stealing would not be tolerated, Taffer got his experts to strengthen the staff's skills. Fast forward to near the end of the episode after everyone was up to speed, the business was finally ready to be renovated. Post Bar Rescue, the place was doing so well that they were booking bands at least 5 nights a week. Eventually, the owner decided to rename the place to Weber's Sports Bar and Grill, but this is when things started to go downhill. Not making enough money to stay open, the bar ultimately closed down in July of 2013. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.